but he doesn't think that he's in this world, even though he's already too deep from yeah. frame one. And I like the idea, like, sort of to take people on, you know, kind of a rush, because there are a lot of other, like, films in this genre that I think, and not to be, you know, not that I'm angry about it, but there are lots more irresponsible films where, like, um, you know, they do films about criminals, but they're like, oh, but he's the good criminal, and the other guy is the bad criminal, or something, like, and he gets away with it at the end. And, and I, I, I actually saw when I was writing this, I was watching a lot of the old Warner Brothers gangster films, like uh, Angels with Dirty Faces and um, uh, Public Enemy and um, White Heat. And I, I always liked those moralistic endings where it's like actually sort of that you, you, can't, you can't just get away with it. And, um, and, and then that was important to me. So I like this idea of like, in a way that writing a movie, you're sort of living out your like sort of fantasy, however brief it is, and then the kind of like the real world starts to come crashing in. What's your favorite version of Harlem Shuffle? <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, the Bob and Earl one. The original is the best one. Rolling Stones? I don't, I love the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Foundation? I, I, I know, I love the Rolling Stones. I do not love their cover of uh, Okay, okay. It's not my favorite one. It's not, it's not in the movie. The Foundation one is good though, that's why that's in the movie as well. But the, I mean, the original one is great. And obviously, a certain a younger audience are expecting House of Pain to start any second after the intro as well. It's, uh, there's always songs that are the ones that get away, that you can't quite corner and earn for your movie. Um, I have a couple of them that just have been dogging me forever. I'm working my way through it. You, however, careened right into one that I never could get to work, which was Hocus Pocus by Focus. Ah. And when I watched that, I was like, damn. Bucket list. <laughs> oh, belongs to Edgar. Um, but what are some of your bucket list songs that you've not been able to use in a movie? Well, usually ones that are tricky to use in a movie is something where, I mean, I think what it is is like, I think there's two bucket list ones for me in this movie would be something like Hope Spoke. But also the Queen song, Bright and Rock, is like, you sort of, if you use a song like that, which is, is so, you, you sort of have to commit to it. And the thing with this movie, the thing is, in a lot of movies, not yours, but in a lot of movies, people like have a great intro and then fade it out. And like, so that's most like 75% of music in movies is like, oh, I love this song, and I fade it out for the exposition. <laughs> but I think you have many times like used music as a central point of a scene. And the idea with this is like, so if you're going to play the song, hear the song, yeah. you know, like sometimes almost in its entirety. So to me, like, sort of like, kind of like, you know, like I, I, I have not got tired of any of the songs in the film, and like a good song, and like and things like sort of like I never ever get tired of watching the Barry White scene, yeah, because I love the song, and also it's given so much air and so much tension, and it's just like I never I never get tired of listening to the song or it kicking into that chorus. In terms of songs that I wanted to use but never used, that's a that is a tricky one. Um, I think on this one I used up a lot of them. I managed to get them in. Do you work? I have. Let me come back to that. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, I have a guest question from J.J. Abrams. <laughs> he wings in with this question for you, Edgar. Is there any coincidence that Simon Pegg is not in this film and it's your biggest hit? <laughs> oh, thank you, J.J. My question about the J.J. is, say that to Simon's face. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, really enough, Nick Frost's voice is in the movie because there was a tiny clip of uh, the music video that I did 15 years ago it is briefly on the TV, and you see Noel Fielding, and you actually hear Nick Frost's voice. But um, no, I, 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 you know, I mean, I think so. I, 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 I um, we'll bring it up outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll bring up Julian here in a minute. But uh, you said Walter Hill and the Driver is a big inspiration. Let's talk about another big inspiration: Christy Flowers. <laughs> we, <laughs> we were talking. You guys don't know Christy Flowers? We were talking about she Janet. broke Edgar's heart at age 15. 